All right, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, everyone who's joined. Um, we are quite excited about this particular release. Um, just keep in mind that this release is happening only 45 days after the previous one. There is a real reason for it because we have been working hard for several months now uh, in order to get this particular version out uh, to everyone in the field. Why did we release 1.5.1 shortly after we released 1.5.0? Even though you know it seems like a very minor release, there is a lot that is that went into this particular uh, version. First of all, we do have a new Windows recorder that is part of this uh, release. A lot of new features that have come into this uh, recorder. It is a, even though we are calling it a new one, it is an existing recorder that that we have been uh, that has been part of Cerebro for a long time, and it is incredibly stable. We took that recorder and um, connected it to the Vision platform. A lot of work went into uh, making that happen, but a few things that I do want to address is that it has fewer antivirus issues. We will go through some of them uh, as we uh, go uh, to the next slides. Um, we have had uh, customers complain that there are intermittent recording issues. Those are hopefully will be uh, completely gone or significantly reduced. We do have new installers with the new uh, recorder. And more importantly, the reason why we did this is that this particular recorder will allow us to add additional features as we continue to grow our product. This is extremely critical for us because our existing recorder um, this is it. This is the end of the line for the previous recorder. We are not going to do any more changes to it. Um, as we continue to grow uh, the platform, this recorder will be our, our main uh, recorder for Windows. We also have a updated Chrome OS recorder. Uh, this has been an ask, and that is something that we have addressed as part of this release as well. Um, again, the focus is going to be more on the Windows recorder because this is a significant step for us. Some of the changes in the Chrome recorder are going to be uh, visible for our Chrome OS customers, uh, but they're not as critical as the Windows recorder. With that, um, Jack, I'm going to turn this over to you. Certainly, thank you, Ray. I just want to uh, quickly highlight some of the enhancements and fixes uh, that are in 1.5.1. As uh, Ray mentioned, I think many of these are not going to be visible to you. Uh, I don't want to. Uh, overlook the fact that there was so much under the hood work done in 1.5.1, uh, getting the cerebral recorder to be able to send data to vision and for vision to understand and accept that data and uh, put that data up on the screen for everyone to, uh, to see and enjoy and analyze. Uh, that's a lot of hard work. Uh, there were parts of the, the product, um, and Ray might think maybe I'm getting too into the weeds here, but there were parts of the product um, that cost us money to use. Uh, so every time there was a new deployment of Vision, it would cost us money in order to do that. And so we took that out of the product, spent a bit of time uh, rebuilding that from the ground up uh, with almost the identical functionality what we had before. And now we can deploy these additional instances of Vision, particularly when we start to deploy on-prem instances without taking some money right off of the top to pay somebody uh, that isn't very auto. Uh, so that was something that was really important to do for the future. But when you look at the product, um, hopefully we did such a great job with that that you probably aren't even going to notice it. But again, I just don't want to understate uh, how important some of these under the hood updates were uh, for the future of the product and for the future of very auto in general. Um, so uh, with that said on the screen, there are a whole bunch of different uh, enhancements and fixes listed here. I'm not going to go through each of these. Uh, in fact, I may not even be able to specifically discuss each of these, but thankfully uh, I know people who know people who invited other people to this call uh, that could answer questions about uh, any of these specific items uh, should they come up. Just uh, make a note to yourself, hang on to it uh, to the end, and if you have any questions about any of these specific items, uh, we can get those addressed for you. Uh, as Ray mentioned, we have kind of set aside the uh, previous recorder provision, the InterGuard recorder. Uh, it will still be available should 
uh, any customers have a very specific need for it. And the reason for that is, as you can see, primarily at the bottom of this slide, there are a few features with those nice green check marks there that the InterGuard recorder has currently and has had that the Cerebral recorder, which we're now calling the Vision recorder, uh, doesn't have yet, but will have. Uh, so it's very important to keep those in mind. Um, we just did 95% uh, of the work to get the vision recorder uh, sending data, but there are just a few things left uh, that will be handled in the very short term. Um, I think Ray is talking weeks, maybe a month or two on a couple of these things that you can chime in if you want to, Ray, but these things are coming soon and that's a short term soon as opposed to a long term soon. So that being said, as was discussed, uh, I think everybody's aware of this at this point. As of yesterday, about midday, any new accounts that are provisioned in Vision will be given the Vision Recorder, aka the Cerebral Recorder. And so just keep in mind that those items down there are not available with that recorder uh, quite yet. Uh, so all that said, if you do have a customer that needs those specific items, my suggestion would be to uh, reach out to Nelson or myself, uh, and we can talk about those requirements uh, with you and with the customer if necessary. And we can, if we need to, uh, flip a switch in their instance and uh, turn it back the other way so they can have that inner guard recorder in the meantime. But like I said, those uh, functions are coming very soon in the cerebral agent or the vision agent, I guess I'm trying to get used to that myself, uh, in the vision agent. So if we're talking about an opportunity that's not going to close for another month or two months or three months, then it might not make sense to switch back to the inner guard recorder uh, for them. But we can have that conversation and it is available if it's absolutely necessary. But the plan going forward is that uh, the vision recorder will be the recorder that's uh, deployed to new customers. We'll be switching existing customers over as, uh, as we move forward. And uh, the inner guard recorder will be the exception rather than the rule. For all of you folks who are um, uh, customer facing folks, um, please note that this is not a new recorder, as in like this is not something that we built just now. This is an existing recorder that was part of a very stable platform that we repurpose and re-architect it to support our current um, vision product. So when you do talk to customers, keep that in mind um, because uh, we don't want the customers to think that they're getting something brand new and it is not being tested or um, vetted by a lot of other customers. So the antivirus impact, when we talk about the uh, updated recorder, the vision recorder, aka the recorder that came from Cerebral, it consistently outperforms uh, the old recorder or the vision recorder, I'm sorry, the inner guard recorder when it comes to antivirus and stability. Uh, we do, again, require antivirus exclusions for the updated recorder, and they are different than the ones for the inner guard recorder, but they also are presented to the customer in the same way. We'll see that in a few minutes, uh, but those have been uh, replaced for customers who will be receiving the vision recorder. And again, it is the same recorder that's used in Cerebral. So it is, uh, uh, has been time tested. It's been used for a long time by many customers of all sizes and, and uh, it works very well. We did have a lot of issues with antivirus in the inner guard agent. And we're hoping uh, by switching to the vision agent, we will, uh, in fact, I say hoping, but uh, it's almost a certainty that we're going to run into many fewer antivirus issues and we've also made some improvements in that area with the vision agent as well uh, to consolidate some of the, uh, I don't want to get too technical here, but there are some temporary exclusions that kind of went all over the place. And uh, we've consolidated those into fewer locations. So it's much easier for customers to set up the antivirus exclusions, even than it was with Cerebral previously. But again, we do strongly recommend setting antivirus exclusions, even with the vision agent. And I would like to, to share a story that some of you may know already, uh, if you've been here for a long time, uh, if you, uh, or you may have forgotten it. And if you haven't been here very long, you probably don't know this story at all. But there was a time uh, when the cerebral agent was whitelisted with some antivirus vendors. Symantec comes to mind. 
I'm sure uh, uh, Lynette is is either smiling or frowning right now, depending on how she's thinking about this story. Uh, but we were whitelisted with Symantec and customers and admittedly some of us got a little bit complacent with the antivirus exclusions because Symantec simply didn't detect it. And uh, a lot of customers weren't putting in those antivirus exclusions and everything was going great until it wasn't, until there was some kind of an issue with the antivirus definitions in Symantec. And then all of a sudden some large customers had detections of the recorder all over their environment and spent hours or maybe even days resolving those issues. So that's why it's very important uh, that we put in the antivirus exclusions regardless. That's uh, something that should should always be done. It takes a few minutes to do it, uh, but if the, if it's not done and the detections come, it can take a few hours or a few days to resolve the issue. So again, uh, we don't want to uh, understate the necessity of the antivirus exclusions. And Nelson reminded me earlier that there was a similar story, almost identical uh, with WebRoot at one time where we weren't being detected exclusions weren't put in and then customers had issues. So I did want to make sure uh, that we address that and we don't understate the, the importance of that always. So I would just like to give a couple quick examples uh, real quick. Uh, so uh, on the InterGuard recorder uh, for like an antivirus like Bitdefender, the only way that you could get it installed was by excluding the SVC host.exe, which was something that was not recommended really by anyone and uh, by several customers that would refuse to do it um, as it is a potential attack vector for uh, truly malicious software. Uh, we had similar issues with ESET and Sophos um, where it was um, you know, nearly impossible to get it installed without excluding uh, some you know, core Windows system components that could potentially put customers' environments at risk. Uh, WebRoot, um, we had to exclude basically all 50 some odd files uh, through hashes uh, that were only good for the specific version of the software that we had. Um, many of the AVs, including Windows Defender, would immediately detect our installer executable uh, or MSI and quarantine that, which would uh, also really impact the software because our installers are unique to each customer. They have different uh, unique hashes. Um, so those are just a couple of examples. Uh, you know, if if you could get it to work in the AV, it was a arduous task that sometimes required uh, changing of settings when a new version came out. So um, just some examples. Another uh, important thing to note is that the default agent that customers got on the InterGuard side was copying files to the Windows temp folder. Uh, while we did have a workaround for that, it was only given out to select customers in this new recorder avoids the temp folder. So just some additional points. Stephen, can you also uh, chime in on your experience since we released it yesterday? <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. So uh, one of our customers who had been having issues with Bitdefender, uh, who had been trying to find a workaround other than excluding that Windows process um, for months um, unsuccessfully um, has already been able to install it in less than an hour after we let notified them of the new recorder, they had it installed and checking in and recording data. Thank you, Thanks, Stephen. Steve. Yeah, and again, I'm not trying to under, understate the difference that you will experience with this, this agent than with the inner guard agent, but at the same time, uh, I do want to just reiterate that the antivirus exclusions are necessary and easier and the experiences that Stephen described with the InterGuard agent should not be experiences that uh, customers will have moving forward with the Vision agent. And I'm gonna hand this uh, slide over to you, Ray. Thank you. So uh, we always do this for every release. We have a slide that talks about what is coming uh, next. Uh, exciting things are happening. New Mac recorders are, is going to be part of the subsequent releases. We have Power BI integration, SAM integration, private cloud and on-prem installers, and many, many other features that we'll be adding in the, in the next uh, release. So look forward to that announcement, um, hopefully soon. So I do wanna jump into the product for just a couple of minutes. This will, be, this will be very brief. As I mentioned, many of the changes, most of the changes in 1.5.1 are with the agent and uh, the recorder. 
and also under the hood. So you probably won't notice a whole lot, but I do want to point out a couple of things. As a, Before I do, though, as I jump through here, one of the big changes that was done, uh, I talked about earlier, was these uh, all of these different grids where the data is viewed. All of those were redone in 1.5.1. And if everyone's done their job well, which hopefully we have, you won't really notice a difference with these. So again, it's not something that's going to stand out, but it's something that's going to position us better for the future. And uh, there was a whole lot of work done to this. So I, I just want to uh, make sure everyone's work is recognized on that. Uh, so I do have notes of a couple of things primarily uh, related to moving forward with the vision agent or the cerebral agent. Um, and those are going to be over here first when we download agents. As I mentioned, the new antivirus exclusions will be uh, presented so the customer can put those in here. Uh, if they are still using the previous agent, the InterGuard agent, uh, they will still see the InterGuard agent exclusions on this screen. So this is something that happens automatically uh, on the new deployments of Vision, as well as any customers that we've manually switched over to the new agent. Uh, then on the next screen, on the download screen, uh, mine might take just a moment here, but on the download screen, you're going to have uh, the same options as before. If it's a new customer, they're going to generate their installers, and then they'll have two buttons here instead of three. Uh, the one that's going to be uh, missing with the Vision Agent, at least for now, is the uninstaller. But if necessary, uh, support can be contacted uh, to assist with an agent uninstaller. But otherwise, these two buttons work identically. They're just going to download a different file than what was uh, downloaded previously. Over on the company account page, same sort of thing. Uh, the antivirus exclusions have been replaced. And again, this is automatic. So what you see here will depend on whether the customer is provisioned for the vision agent or for the inner guard agent. Let's jump over to the recording policy. A little bit of a change there. Uh, if you can recall from a few minutes ago, There were still a few features from the vision agent that uh, the InterGuard agent had. Uh, I mentioned that we were going to have those in product in probably the next month or two. Uh, but for now, as they are not available, if the customer is provisioned for the vision agent, then the alert word screenshots, the block websites and block applications buttons here will be disabled. So uh, they will not be able to configure those. And then the last one here that I can think of is going to be under productivity. When we expand uh, one of these users and select their timeline, currently the vision agent does not read the calendar from Outlook. So the calendar tab here is going to be grayed out for now. And again, that's handled automatically uh, based on which agent uh, is deployed to those users. So those are the only things I want to draw your attention to in the UI. So uh, if anybody has any questions, or Ray or Steven, if either of you can think of anything that I may have uh, overlooked or forgot to mention, I I do want share. to add I do want to add a few points. So the reason why some of the features are not in the current uh, the latest uh, recorder is we have carefully looked at the features that are currently being used by our customers and identified the ones that are critical. Those are some things that we prioritize, and we uh, we uh, right now everything works beautifully. Um, in the subsequent uh, months, we will be adding some of the gaps that we have, and that'll take care of some of the um, features that are missing in this particular recorder. Uh, again, I bring back that point that I made in the beginning of this call, which is it has only been 45 days since uh, our previous release and our previous demo. That 45 days includes several weeks of testing um, and making sure that everything works. But the team has done an exceptional job of actually, you know, replacing some of the core components of the product uh, underneath, under the hood. Uh, with that, um, any questions, any just, comments? Just want to just wanna hit on just a couple, just, just I think they already mentioned, but the, the new features or features that are supported with the new recorder that I were not supported in the old recorder or the updated recorder. Um, so Microsoft Teams 
uh, chat monitoring. That is definitely, you know, as supported. I, I think Jack mentioned that in the slide earlier. Um, that had been um, not working in the InterGuard agent. Um, we've also seen some tickets recently about Gmail recording on the InterGuard side. Uh, so that is uh, maybe something that is not working in the InterGuard recorder that is working in the updated recorder. And then lastly, but um, not insignificant, is uh, file upload tracking in the browsers. Um, so uh, any cloud service um, where file uploads happen within a browser is supported in this recorder. There is, um, uh, in the next release, we're coming out with additional file upload uh, tracking in standalone applications. Um, and then also one other thing uh, is that uh, since we recently were able to roll out the Mac uh, silent installer deployment, remote in silent installer deployment, um, it really sort of puts the Mac recorder uh, very close uh, in parity to the cerebral Mac, Mac recorder. I think one of the biggest differences uh, is that the file tracking uh, is still not in the vision Mac recorder until that version comes out. Um, but other than that, they're, um, they're pretty close in functionality. On the Chrome side, they're now almost one-to-one -one with this release, um, so extremely close.